Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about rotating coils in EMF. Now please be aware in exams they may try and trick you and say an uh, object has been rotated 90 degrees in a field, uh, work out the EMF it has been induced. So it could have gone from this position to this position. In that case you will have to use Faraday's law, okay, because it's gone from peak amount of uh, flux linkage to zero flux linkage, okay? So all the other way around. So this is what you use for an object that is just quite happily, all right, in uh, just rotated through an angle. What I'm gonna be talking about today is things that are literally spinning and have uh, like angular velocities and um, frequencies, etc. okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this formula here, that flux linkage is BAN cos theta. If I draw the diagram again, I have my box here, and I have my field lines going through it like that. And theta is this angle here. It is the angle that the field lines are making uh, with the horizontal. And of course, when cos theta equals 1, theta equals 0 degrees, OK? Now, just something you need to be aware of, that here, this graph here, technically, what this is, is a differentiation. So if I had a graph, <coughs> of flux linkage and time, okay, a lovely straight line graph here. This is just an object moving from one position to another. Um, and this gradient here, this gradient would equal the EMF made. Okay, so the change in Y over the change in X would be my EMF that I would have made. Okay. But I'm not talking about something moving from one position to another in a nice linear motion. I am talking something moving into a circle here, all right? And so what I'm going to be doing is looking at this formula here. Now the problem is, is that this formula at the top that has nothing to do with time. I, what I need to do is try to find a way to relate this angle with the time that is um, been going around. And I can do this by using circular motion. I know omega is the angle over the time which means that omega times t, whoops, omega t is my angle. So what I can actually do is work out the angle that I am at any point in time by knowing it's spinning, it's angular velocity and what time it's in. So I'm going to replace this into here, okay? And so I end up with my flux, equals B A N cos omega T. And if I was to plot this on a graph, it would look like this. It would be a cos graph, like that, where this here is B A N. And of course, this is a cos, and this would be a T graph here. So what I've done here is I've done my flux linkage over time and as you can see it goes to peak to trough to peak okay now as I said before my gradient of that graph is my EMF okay and so I'm going to do that at this point here I've got zero at this point here I've got maximum negative zero Maximum positive, I'm just going to make this graph a little bit more like that, there you go, and zero again. So I've got a minus sine graph here. And those who know how to differentiate, you'll be able to do this, but you don't need to know. But what the equation in the data sheet is that EMF is minus BAN omega sine omega T. Okay, this minus, of course, that's due to Lenz's law. All right. So what I've done here is I've taken the idea of a rotating coil 
And I've replaced this idea of theta, and I've related it to how much it's spinning by using a formula from circular motion. I've put that in there, and I've plotted it on a lovely graph here. And by taking the gradient at any point, I am able to work out the EMF that I generate. And this is the formula here. So let's have a quick go at an example. I have a two meter coil, so two meter, uh, two meter diameter coil. Okay, um, with a hundred tons in a field that is two milliteslas. Okay, it spins at uh, three hertz. What is my maximum EMF? So this is important. Maximum EMF is where I'm going to be maximum here. All right. So the biggest that sine theta or cos theta can ever be is one. So the biggest sine omega t can be is 1. So if I look at this formula, EMF equals minus b a n omega sine omega t. For my maximum EMF, that's where well, this thing here equals 1. If you put it in calculator, the biggest sine theta can be is 1. The smallest it can be is 0. Okay. So all I'm concerned about is EMF equals B A N omega. And I'm not going to put the minus sign in because I don't care about the direction, I just want the magnitude. So let's put some stuff in. So B is 2 times 10 to the minus 3. My area, I've got a 2 meter diameter coil, so that's 1 pi r squared. So 1 squared pi times by number of turns, 100, times by omega. Now I know the frequency, and omega is 2 pi f. So 2 pi times by 3, 6 pi. Put that all into my calculator, just going to run and grab that now. So I get 2 times 10 to the minus 3 times by pi times by 100 times by 6 pi, and I get a maximum EMF made of 11.8 volts. That is going to be my maximum EMF made. So that's, this one's going to be minus 11.8. This one here is going to be positive 11.8 volts. Okay. So what I've done there is I've taken the, one, I've taken the coil for BAN, uh, N, BAN cos theta and looked at flux linkage at an angle. And now I have an object moving through and rotating through lots of angles. I'm relating that to time. And by relating that to time and plotting it, the gradient of that graph is the EMF that is made. Okay, because looking at Fenz's law or Faraday's law, you can see that the change in flux over time is the EMF, the gradient of that line. So that there is the EMF generated in a rotating coil. And by rotating, I mean spinning. Okay. Please be aware of this when you're you in exams. And highlight the word rotating if it's got a frequency or an RPM. And also be aware that they may use the word rotated when all they mean is an object doing this to this. So that there is the EMF in a rotating coil.